Well, hello. This is the first test to see if everything is working, if the sound is working. So please send me a chat on the right if you can hear me. And then I'm sure that it works. OK, thank you. And this is another check to see if everything is working. Please let me know if you hear my voice. You should hear my voice and see the screen with say, which says, says, discover the power of facilitating business constellations. On the right, there's this chat screen. Uh, Anna, Anna hears me, great. Welcome. We will start in about two, three minutes. I'll give some time for other people to join. I know people are always a little bit late, so. Also, welcome to the people that just joined. This is a test to see if the sound is working. You should see the screen. Uh, Margit says, I can hear you, great. And then we'll just start in about one minute. Um, for the constellation we will do, you will need three pieces of paper and a pen to write on it. So. Make sure that you have these pieces of paper here. Take some time to get them now. Make sure that everything is turned off, your Facebook, your phone, that people in your house know that you're busy and don't disturb you, so that you can have all the time to focus on this webinar. Okay, well, Dick, do you also hear me? Please send it in the chat on the right, because I haven't heard from you yet. Okay, I think we'll start with the webinar. I'm doubting if I should wait for Dick, but we'll just start. Oh, I see a chat coming in from Dick. Three pieces of paper and a pen. Very good. Okay, welcome. Welcome to this webinar about facilitating business constellations. And well, I've given two webinars about constellations in general, how to use them in the business. In this webinar, I would like to focus a little bit more about you know, what does it take to facilitate business constellations and why do I like it and why, yeah, why um, should you use them? And, and we're gonna do a constellation as well as in the last web webinar I did one, so we did, we're gonna do one uh, this time as well. Uh, if you have any questions, use the chat on the right or maybe for you it's on the, my left, 
Um, and afterwards, you can also ask me questions via mail or via phone. Uh, I know people are watching live. I know people will be watching later. So also welcome to people watching this later. Um, we'll, we'll start. So where am I from? Well, my name is Marta Nijla and I'm from Deventer. This is the beautiful city of Deventer on the Isol River. And it's in the east of the Netherlands. Um, and I have a, a business, my own business. And the main thing I do is helping people using intuition in their business, how to improve businesses, how to improve your work using intuition and intuitive methods. And business constellations is one of the methods I use, but I also use visualizations, uh, release techniques, energy work, and just plain business models and business um, theory and practices. So I combine these two worlds. And the mission I have is to align businesses with the needs of people and the planet and making profit as a result. So I would like to turn things around, not going for profit and sacrifice everything, um, but going for having a, a, a yeah fun with people, having a fulfilled life for people, um, do good things in the world for the planet. And I think, and I'm sure that intuit, intuition and intuitive methods help us with that because they will um, well align us with this deeper knowledge and this field of information that brings us all together instead of brings us farther, far, farther apart. So that's why I love using intuition and intuitive methods. And it's also what I do is working from a consciousness of unity and wholeness instead of separa separateness and um, division. So that's what I do. And so I would like to know where are you from? We're with a small group of live uh, viewers, but please in the chat, tell me where you're from, which country, which city, um, and it's interesting, well, maybe where you live or where you work or where you were born. So please share with, we, with, with us, where are you from in the chat? And if you're watching this in the replay, well, then <laughs> there's nothing to do now. So we have somebody from Zwolle, which is a little bit to the north of David, where I live in the, so in the east, a little bit more to the north. Rovigo in Italy. And Anna is living in Oman, which is further north and further to the east in Holland. So we have Emmerichit from Venlo in the south of the Netherlands. So we have, all have people from living in Holland, but one Italian. And there are many people watching this later because I'm going to put it on my website and, and well, distribute it in the social media. So. Um, and what I would like to know is how familiar are you with using business constellations or constellations? So please take a minute to fill out and below the, uh, the screen, you will find the questions with three answers or five answers actually. No, this is my first encounter. I've heard about it. I've experienced one. I've experienced more than one or I'm very familiar. One, I've heard about it. and I've experienced more than one. Okay, so we have a different kind of experience, which is okay, just for me to know that. All right. I would like to share a little bit of a background about business constellations. Um, and this is in order of chronologically order. So it's like in time. So first, actually, there were the Zulu people. They, they have been around for a long time and they, have a special ritual what they do with people that break the law or uh, do something that is not good what they do instead of putting them away from the family and away from the community they include them in the family they say okay go live closer to your family and then whenever you feel like you 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 have re, um, thought about what you have done and why you've done it but in in the in harmony or in actually in the in the bedding and in the of the family they they found it's easier to, um, well, to forgive, it's easier to reconnect again. And Bert Hellinger, who found, was the founder of uh, Family Constellations, he lived with the Zulus for a long time. So that's where he 
got that information. He was also a priest from the Catholic Church, so he has also put some Christian well um, methods or ideas in, in the methodology. It's also based on Carl Jung, who says there's not only the consciousness, but there's also the subconsciousness. And it's influencing our behavior because like anxieties, uh, we know that spiders, we can kill a spider instantly, but we're still scared of it. So there's something subconscious ha happening. And then we have Marino, which uh, is a psychologist who worked with psychodrama. And it's well, already a little bit like constellations where he put people in the room and he gave them roles and, 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 and lines to say. And this way he depicted the, the, the problem of, what, of a client and it got, got, gave a lot of information. Well, these two guys, I think, Watzlawick and Bateson, they found out that working with children, that most of the time when the children were put back into the family, the, the problem started again. So they had to work with the whole family instead of only with the children. And also Virginia Satir, she really worked with families and she also had the families doing um, kind of, of drama. And then Bert Hellinger, he, he included everything. He combined everything and he created family constellations. And the thing that he added, one of the things he added is that he, he took complete strangers and had those strangers represent people, people from the family of, of the client. And these strangers, just by standing in, in yeah, by standing in the spot, they could feel and sense all kinds of things that the original person also felt, and they were not even in the room. So this is where it came very, um, yeah, interesting. And in and, and, and this way, he touched a different layer in, in psychotherapy. Um, so, that's a little bit of a history. And well, it was in the 90s that he already started with this. And in the, in the beginning, it was really strict procedures. The facilitator was doing all the work. So he was putting the people in the right place. He was moving them around. He was uh, having them saying sentences. And he was really focused on fixing problems and, and, and really focused on the family system. It really all started with family systems. Um, and the, the, the thing I like about Bert Hellinger is that he's continuously, he's in, in his 90s now, but he still is uh, developing, he is learning, he's changing his ideas. And so the, the, the field has changed a lot. And also what I liked about him is that he hasn't made like a certification for it or he said, okay, only certain people can do this. He has... Well, giving it to the world, actually. So that's what I like about the whole business constellation work. So where are we now? Well, constellations are used in many, many areas. We have to still have the family constellations, very powerful therapy tool. But we also have the organization constellations, where we don't work with elements from the, from the family, but we work with elements from the organization, like divisions, like teams, or functions or with the client or the client of the client and with the marketing tools and we work with all kinds of elements from the organization field and then we have career constellations they are focused on a career of someone relationship constellations illness constellations team constellations marketing constellations strategy constellations so and you can name 20 more and that's what i also interesting i started with a group two days ago here in the, in the Netherlands. And there were two people who wanted to use it, use constellations, combining it with voice, with voice uh, liberation. So, and I don't know how to do it and they don't know yet, but in the training, there's also this space to explore your own way of using constellations. So maybe you will add some more areas to this list. There are also many types of constellations these days. The, 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 the basic one is working with a group in a workshop and somebody has a question and, and people are representing the different elements. They're put in the room uh, representing these elements. But you can also work with tabletop. You see it on the picture. There are these little gems and these two people are working with the gems. So one is the facilitator, the other one is the client and they put the, the pieces on the table and they will actually create this um, 
tableau vivant, this living, living well, picture on the table. You can do the same with floor markers, and that's what we're going to do in the, in the, in the exercise later. You, you put floor markers on the floor, pieces of paper or a little, um, well, whatever you, you have. You can also do it in a visualization. So you can have somebody close his eyes and imagine that he sees his, his company and his clients and how are they connecting and and it does the same as it has the same effect. And you can do it in drawing. So you draw a picture with the different elements and you draw lines between them. So it's very interesting. And there are many ways of facilitating. You still have the people that have the directive um, facilitation style, um, moving people around, asking people to stand somewhere, bringing in new representatives and making them say words. Um, you also have these fixed interventions, like, okay, we, if there's something wrong with the father and, and, the, and the son relationship, we need to say these words, these sentences, we need to bow and do this. Um, you also have people working in silence, almost silence or complete silence. I also work with that in do constellations in complete silence. There are fixed format or structured uh, constellations. There is like, okay, we have these elements and we place them like this and then we do this exercise. It's very, very powerful. And we also have the more intuitive facilitation that we, well, I, that's the one I like a lot, of course. Um, and, and in the beginning, when I learned how to facilitate, um, I hadn't read many books, so I didn't really know all the theory, but just working intuitively, um, things happened and I knew to do the right things. And then later on, I started reading in the books and said, oh, this is what was happening there. Oh, now I understand. So it really helped me a lot to read a lot, but it, I could also do it without just using intuition. So that's where we are in the current playing field. And for me, I'm really focused on using business constellations in a business environment, which doesn't mean that I only work with business constellations, because if you work with a business owner, you have issues that are business related, but also issues that are personal related or that they seem business related, but they are in the end personal related. So I combine business constellations, career constellations with family constellations, team constellations, all depending on the client, what they want from me and how far they want to go in their, in their personal life. All right, so what happened from working with all these constellations, uh, Bert Hellinger and all the people that, that did the work after him, they found some principles and they have a systemic perspective on, on on people and organizations and it's very interesting and there are a lot of interesting books about what they have learned from from thousands of constellations because there are some patterns some well what is well it's like some principles that are being shown by working with the constellations i've pointed out some things that are important for me. One of them is that in constellations, we don't analyze. We're not looking, okay, so what is the cause? What is the effect? We're not looking for these kind of things. We're observing phenomenologically, a very difficult word, uh, but it means that you take things as they are. You look at the things as they are uh, and you're just observing and yeah, well, the, the, the last one, no judgment. So it's not like, oh, is this good or bad or should we change it or not? No, we're just observing. We're just looking at it and being open and seeing what wants to unfold or what is unfolding in front of us. And that's one of the things that I teach you in the in the training. That's one of the things that is a because if you're a trainer or a coach or an advisor or a consultant or a manager, well, most of the time you're used to giving your opinion or trying to fix something, wanting to find the solution, wanting to um, understand. And this is really something different. So this is different about Constellation. And what I like about it is every time I, I, I work with a Constellation, 
I have these two parts inside of me. There's this one part that is open and observing and and there's this part I want to understand and what is happening here and more and more I get to used to, okay, well, it's okay to want that, but not for now, we're just exploring, we're just investigating. And it also helps me in daily life because there it's also interesting to see what happens if you look at your life just as an observer and not wanting to change and things and I want this and not that. and. So it's, it, it also helps me in daily life. And that's also what I like about constellations. Another thing is if you look systemically and it's different from systematically, but systemically is that you zoom out from the part to the whole instead of zooming in and finding, okay, what is the detail that is, that is not right here? Why is this not working? We don't take things apart. Like, like a machine. If a machine is not working, you take it apart and see what is not working. And we have been looking at organizations like it is a machine, but it, it, it is not, it's not at all. It's more like an organism. So, and with an organism, it's quite interesting to zoom out and see, okay, so what is the whole system here? And why is this part behaving like this? And it could be that this part is behaving like this because somewhere else in the organization or in my body or in my family, there's an issue or there's something happening. And um, by doing this, you can find the real cause of a problem. Otherwise, we will look at this employee that is not doing his work and we will fire him or we, we say, okay, you need coaching and then you give him coaching and, and nothing changes because there's a, a larger well, consciousness at work, um, which is which is causing this. And that's where the third point, which is an interesting port, point, of course, that problems in we, we encounter problems in our life, in our business, in our organizations, and they are not problems, but actually they are solutions. And they are solutions by the larger system for something that is not balanced or something that is not being seen or something that is excluded. Um, and then parts of the whole, like an employee, but also a part of your body will have start having problems. And actually it is only saying to us, be aware if something in the system is not working right. Um, but it's most of the time that is not done uh, consciously. So people are not saying that they're saying, well, I don't like this and I hate this, or they, 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 they are sick. Um, but this is a symptom. It's actually, um, yeah, and actually it's a solution of the larger system for some problems that are, uh, I'll, in the next sheet I'll tell you more about that, but it's, it's something in the system is not working. Uh, and another systemic perspective is that they're always repeating patterns. It's like a fractal. So if you're working in an organization, um, something, some issue in your organization will be repeated between the organization and the client. It will be repeated inside uh, uh, between the comp between the different parts of the company, between different employees, between uh, or maybe even within an employee or be with in, uh, in the family of an employee. So there are, for example, if it is, I always take the the, the, the example of a, of the police, um, and I don't know of a lot about the police organization, but I would assume that they are working on um, safety in the in the world. So I think safety is, is an issue in the, in the organization of the police. People might not be safe or it's difficult to find a safe place or it's safety is on somewhere in an issue. And the same goes for the families of the people working there. I think people might have an issue with safety in their own lives as well. And clients of the, of the police, like the, 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 the civilians, they have problems with safety, why they need the police. But there might also be an issue between the police and and, and the community talk about safety. So if you can put your finger on what it is that the, the, that, it, that, that um, yeah, this uniqueness of the, of the organization, then you can find it in all kinds of relationships around this organization. So it's a very powerful way, even without constellations to look at organizations. And in the um, in systems, there are three leading forces or life-giving forces, or well, they're called principles. And it's important, and or well, it's very uh, 
helpful to, to look at organizations or at lives of people from these three points of view. And the first one is everything is included. If there's a system, if, if something is part of a system and the system is, well, like my body is a system and it, now we are a system in this webinar, um, a, an organization is a system with all kinds of parts. And everything needs to be included. So that's for organizations, for example, also things that happened in the past. It's part of the past of the company. And sometimes we want to rip out this page of the history because something happened, we, we, no, somebody, somebody did something bad or something, the company did something bad, but it's part of the, of, of the history. So we need to include that. And if it's not included, then somewhere in the system, there will be a problem, which is a solution saying, okay, this is, this is, this is excluded or we're forgetting this, or, um, we need to include this again. The same goes for exchange, for giving and taking, for a balance of in and out. So it's the balance of giving and taking between the, the system and its environment. And if you give too much, then there will be a problem in the system and also between the system and its environment. And if you take too much, it's the same. And it's not that we have like these accountants that they, they calculate everything. It's more like an inner balance or an inner calculation. Uh, but it's very powerful and people really know when they're getting too much or when they're getting too little from a company. Um, and well, I always use the example of price. If you ask a price that is too low, then you give your clients a debt and you don't want to do that. And they will say, oh, yeah, it's very good. We have the lowest price. Yes, yes. And, but at the same time, they will sense that they get too much for what they pay. And they will be, and then, then there will be a, an issue, a problem. Like they will say, we're not happy with this, or they complain a lot, or they will even go away and go to your competitor. And it's very strange because you think, eh, but they, I gave the lowest price, and why are they leaving? No, it's, it's not about price. It is about exchange. Money is a way of keeping the balance of giving and taking. Um, so that's very good to, to look at if you work with systems with people. Is there somewhere the, the exchange is it disbalanced? And then we have the third one, which is order, which is about there is this natural ordering systems. In families, it's very clear. You have the generations, you have the children, the parents, grandparents, great grandparents. And you have age. So there's people that were born earlier and people that were born later. In organizations, there are different orders. There's hierarchy, which is an order, but at, well, what we find, find in, our, in, in constellations that it is often not a very important order. But you also have the order of seniority. How long have you been with the company? Um, and it's a very important one. Sometimes it's forgotten. They say, oh, these old people, they don't know. We are the young ones and we're going to change this and blah, blah, blah. But they need to respect the order that they were there. The company is, has been here because of the other people, the older people that have been, have been working here. So there need to be respect for the order. Um, well, if you read the books, there is much more information about this. So, But it, I want to give you a general idea about um, yeah, constellations and uh, systemic way of working. But this webinar, I want to focus on the facilitation. So how does it work a webinar? A uh, webinar, <laughs> how does it work a constellation? Well, actually it's very easy. There are these steps, two, four, six, six steps. And these steps are the basic steps in a constellation. It's always interesting when I do uh, the, the training, the first, wow, the first day I tell you, okay, this is how it works. So we do the interview. An interview is more like an exploration of the question. So but in, in, in constellations, we call it the interview. And actually, the only thing we do there is that we want to find out what is the real question here. And we want to find out what elements uh, or aspects play a role in this question. And that's already the hard part, because as a consultant, you want to give an advice. 
as a coach, you want to ask coach questions. So where does it come from? How is it still serving you? Where did it, yeah, what is your dream about this? Uh, but actually what we do in a consolation interview is, is only looking at the facts. Okay, so this company, when was it founded? Who is the owner? Um, what is the hierarchy? So who is doing what? How long has this person been in this, in this job? Um, questions like that. Who are the clients? Who, is, who else is paying for this company? Is there some other financial flow? So that's already important. That's what you learn in, in the training is how to do a good interview and how to find the elements. What are you going to look at? Because well, with family, it's easy. You have the parents, grandparents, siblings. Um, but what do you constellate with when you look at an organization? You can have all kinds of, of elements. Um, so it's important to learn how to what to look at. Um, and elements, no, well, I, like I said, could be the clients, could be your product, could be, uh, but it could also be like something like money or mission or some abstract elements. And then you choose the representatives. So who is going to what? Who's going to be the, the stand-in or representative for the different elements? Well, that's also interesting. There, you have different choices. You, as a facilitator, can choose them. The, the question owner can choose them. Well, sometimes I do even constellations where these these stand-ins they just find themselves. They feel, oh yeah, I need to be here. So somebody in the group says, feels that he needs to be in the constellation. Then they need to be placed. So you put them in the in the room, like you see here. This this is me being placed by somebody else. Uh, it's about eight years ago, I think. Um, and again, there you have different choices in what to do. The, the stand-ins can place themselves. You have, can have the question owner place the representatives, or maybe even you as a facilitator. And then. It's the phase of exploring the dynamics. What is being shown here? Without wanting to change it, without wanting to fix it, but just curious and very sensitive at the same time. So what do you sense here in the field? What is happening here? And of course, you're looking back at, okay, so it's one of these forces. Is there something with the order or with exchange or with inclusion place? Um, or is there something else that, that, that you sense or see here. So it's very, yeah, it's a very, that's why I call it a craft. It's it's like glass blowing. I mean, if you blow glass, it's a very, very delicate um, job. And it's the glass can break whenever you want, whenever it wants. And it's very delicate to make this beautiful glass piece of art. And it's the same with a constellation. You don't have to do a lot, but you need to be very, sensitive and very delicate and you can do some systemic interventions and it's different from consultancy and it's different from coaching because the systemic interventions there are not many one of them is asking them to move asking the representative to, to follow their inner movement or ask a representative to move to a specific spot so that's moving then you have um, the possibility of adding a representative. You can say, okay, there's this element missing. Somebody says, hey, where's the client? We're missing the client. And you bring in a representative for the client. Or you can do, you can use the healing sentences. That's, those are sentences that are really, you no, know, I like them a lot. So there are some people that not, I'm not working with them anymore because well, if you work with in silence, you're not using the healing sentences. And some people don't, well, they think that without sass, the, without the words, you go more to the deep layers of, of transformation, which is, I think, true. But for me, and it also depends on, on, on the facilitator. For me, I'm a facilitator that likes to work with these, these sentences because like a sentence like, I see you, is a very powerful sentence. What would happen if somebody says, really says, I see you? It is like you really get a place, you're really included. So that's a sentence that really enforces some binding between two people. Well, and there are many, many more sentences, and that's also something you learn in the in, in the training, is how to use these sentences and what sentences you could use. 
And then, and yeah, when do you stop a constellation? It's a very good question because, well, in the beginning, it took like an hour, an hour and a half for me to do a constellation because I really wanted to um, fix all the elements and, and see that everything was in a harmony again. But I've learned that sometimes it's good to, after one step, one movement in the constellation, it's like, okay, something is set in, into in motion, and now we can stop the constellation and it will do its work again. So that's also something that you need to experiment, experiment with, and it's something that you need to um, get more experience with how, when to stop the constellation. And then it's finishing up, but it means that you need to uh, dismiss the representatives that you, yeah, and actually that's all that you need to do. And well, in family constellations, I never talk about the constellation because talking about it brings it back to the, um, yeah, rational mind instead of this other layer where, where transformation can happen. Um, but with business constellations, we might as well, sometimes it's very useful in team, for example, to talk about it. What have we experienced? What have we seen? What are the key, the keys to change here in this team? And then based on this well, almost analyzing, we can talk about, okay, so what actions are we gonna take or not? going to take what are we not going to do and who is going to be responsible for it so it's really depending on um, the aim the goal of the of the constellation and, and what your client wants if there are any questions just type them in the, in the chat i'll just continue um yeah so basically this is what a constellation is about but then after yeah, a lot of experience, you know, okay, so when to stop the interview, how to work with the representatives, what elements to choose. You are very more, more much, much more familiar with working with the, well, the dynamics in the, in the constellation, following your intuition, following the, yeah, the information in the field, in the constellation itself. So, and that's why I do a, use a lot of, of, practicing in in the training because I believe that only by a lot of practicing you will learn this craft so what makes a good facilitator a good facilitator well for me one of the things is that you have to let go and I say of everything well that's not maybe it but a lot so you observe without judgment so you let go of all the judgment all the ideas about what is good what is bad where do we need to go um, so there's no goal, there's no fixing. We're not gonna fix anything because nothing is broken. In the end, things might be fixed, but it's not what you're trying to do. Uh, which means that you have to endure the suffering. Sometimes, yeah, and yesterday in the, in the training, well, this facilitation facilitator was saying, okay, well, move away again because somebody was touched. And I said, why are you asking her to move away? All right because well she's touched but there's nothing wrong with being touched and having having to cry so can you endure this suffering this pain yourself can you watch somebody being in pain knowing that it is for the greater good that there's going to be transformation um, and a word we use a lot in the in the cons in facilitation of consolations is empty center and there are also different ideas of what the empty center is. For me, it is like this place when you let go of everything. And if you are really connected with the earth, with, with heaven, if you're really, oh, <laughs> that's the next one, connect with him, yourself, your inner self, with the earth, with the universe and with the field, then there is this silence inside of you. And there's, that's where you can find the inner guidance to facilitate. If you have more, yeah, other people, they find the empty center is that where you're connected with also with your, your, your family system. So I did this visualization once where you connect with your parents then with your grandparents, your great parents, great grandparents and all their issues, all the wars, all the pain, but also all the joy. And then with all the countries and all the all the issues they have, and with all the children and grandchildren and everything, and I thought, wow, is this the empty center? It is full. Uh, and at the same time, I could understand if you're really connected with that, and and at the same time, 
take your own place in the whole family system, then it's also a very powerful place from which you can um, do the interventions. And another two things that I think a good facilitator should do should be is that you hold space. And uh, well, there are all kinds of theories about what is holding space. But for me, holding space is about creating the atmosphere and, and the space for somebody and for, so, for the organization to, to learn, to transform. Um, it's about safety. It is about um, openness. It's about allowing everything to be. And it's also about taking the lead because by taking the lead, you create safety. By offering structure, you create safety because people know, okay, so he's in the lead, I can surrender. And it's also working energetically. And well, that's something that I do more, I think, than other trainers. I use the energy field and, and energy work a lot. So we will also do meditation and, and visualization as part of in the training to um, tune into the field, to tune into your intuition and also to, yeah, create a holding space. And yeah, intuition is an important part. My, my company is called Business Intuition or Intuitive Ondernemen in touch. And um, I think that intuition can be used so very well in, in constellations. And for me, intuition is more than your gut feeling. It is, uh, well, what they call clear seeing or clairvoyance. It's clear knowing, feeling, hearing, smelling, and tasting. So there are different channels of of intuition and we work we will work with that as well in the training okay so that was actually my part about facilitate facilitating constellations and what what take what it takes to do that um, so what a lot of trainings do and I understand that is that a lot of, of the training is is uh, about personal development, about finding your own issues uh, and doing the family constellations. Um, and in my training, because it's so short, it's five days, or in Holland, it's six days, I already assume that you've done some personal work and that there are not a lot of issues, uh, well, great issues that are really bothering you, uh, happening inside of you, because then this training is going to be too short to work on that. And at the same time, uh, some people join to become a facilitator and they find out that there are some issues and they say, wow, this training was great, not because I know how to facilitate now, but because I've transformed a lot of things inside of me. So um, I'll come to that but later, but if you want to know if this training is something for you, you should, or whatever, if you want to make a choice for whatever, there's a, on my website and I'll send a link to you, there's this intuitive uh, exercise for for making choices and it's based also on, uh, on, on constellation and I always say if, if that exercise helps you and says that okay and you really sense in this exercise that you should do the training then the, then you should do the training if you if you don't understand why and how so for me I think it's time to do the exercise to work to do a constellation so we're gonna get out a piece of paper and on the first piece of paper, and I'll, you write, good facility, no, you don't, you write me, your name, I, yo, whatever it is in your language. And there you see the little mark. It's like a little, little nose, but it's the direction that this piece of paper is watching because it's representing a person. Uh, so you always need to be aware if you work with floor markers that it's really, people you're working with. Uh, so it's it's facing a certain direction. So me is facing like, well, to the right top. Uh, but you can, you can put it wherever you want. Um, so put this in the room, yeah. So put the piece of paper, me, in the room. And then you're gonna add we're going to work with inner parts here. So there's a part of you that wants results, that wants to fix things, that wants to change things, and that want to have results. 
And it's interesting as a facilitator to find out how this relates, and I'll also take the other one, to the empty center, the part in you that says, oh, everything's okay. There's nothing. Relax, still. So you take two pieces of paper, one for wanting results, representing that part of you that wants result, and one for the part of you that is the empty center, that is really without judgment, without wanting to change anything. And you place these three people or representatives, represented by pieces of paper, in the room. Just for me, it's, and as a facilitator, I always say, if you want to think about it, it's good. If you feel it, it's good. If you don't know, just do something. So it's not about really sensing and feeling, but it's also about, maybe it's about thinking because wherever you start the constellation, that's where the constellation starts. And it doesn't matter how you get there. So put them in the room the way you like it, you think it is, you feel, sense it is. And then you step on the piece of paper representing yourself. So you are first going to explore how am I here relating to these two parts of me. So you imagine that there are two people standing there and maybe you can look them in the eyes. Maybe you can sense, okay, so who are you more connecting to? Who are you more familiar with? Who are you? And what do you sense when you connect with one or with the other? And what is happening inside of yourself here? What is your body telling you here? And what is your emotions telling you or your mind? You don't have to understand it. It's just all exploring and just keep on breathing. It's a strange advice, but I give it all the time because I see people stop breathing. And it gets a little bit tense. They go, I don't wanna, I don't wanna feel this. So keep on breathing without judgment, just, okay, these are two parts of me. And then you step off this piece of paper and you step on one of the others. You can choose yourself which one you want to explore first. And by stepping on it, you face the same direction as the piece of paper is facing. And you sense from this perspective, what do you experience in this place? Representing either that part that wants results or that part that is the empty center. How do you relate to the other parts? How do you relate to yourself? How do you relate to, well, the other one? It's always interesting to see that these opposite parts, they might already be connected and we think they're opposite. But for you, it could be different, but that's what I sometimes see in constellations. And then you step off this element and you shake a little bit and you move to the other one and step on the other one. And by the shaking, or you can turn a little bit, you, you know, get rid of the energy of this element and you can, you, you, know, you can step into the other energy again. And the same questions, what do you experience here? How does your body feel here? Your mind, your emotions? How do you relate to the other elements? Is there an element that you are more attracted to or is there an element you are less attractive, attracted to? And then you step off this piece of paper and you walk around it a little bit and you observe it as a facilitator. It's a little bit difficult to facilitate your own constellation, but for now, yeah, you don't have other people around. So just walk around it and sense what is happening in this field. So maybe you sense that there's some tension between two, also by knowing what has been said and, and, and shared. Maybe you sense could be missing something or maybe well, just walk around and sense as a facilitator, what do you sense in the field? 
And it's an experiment and it's maybe your first time doing this. So don't expect too much from yourself, but just be open for all the information that you get. And you might feel the tendency to change anything, to move it. But if you want to move the elements, well, for me, actually, it's yeah, it's a rule. I don't like rules, but the only movement that you could do is by stepping on the piece of paper, representing this element, and then sense if this element wants to move. So that's something you could do now, is that you say, oh, I'm attracted to this wanting results. I want to, it is like, as a facilitator, you could, sense that it is like calling you like hey oh, i want to say something and then you step on this element step on the piece of paper and you sense is it wanting to move or what what information is it wanting to share with you and if it wants to move then you move the piece of paper or you move yourself and at the same time move the piece of paper And then you step off again and maybe check with all the elements, also the other two, if they want to move. And I know that maybe it's a little fast, so you can do this exercise afterwards, or if you're watching the replay, just press pause and explore this constellation some more. But for now, I would like to ask you to move to the me, to yourself, and to explore what has happened. Things have, mo have moved maybe, they have said some things to you. So how is this resonating inside of you? What insights does it give you? And it's always interesting to explore, can you say, I see you to both elements? Can you really include them in your life? Can you say you're part of me? And so this is about place, the, 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 the force of place. And can you say, I'm in charge here? Because you're part of me, that means that I can decide which one I listen to when, and which one I'm gonna put in front when. And it's about order. These are parts of you and you are the whole. So can you say, and I'm in charge here and I decide I want you there and I want you there. Just to sense and well, if we continue with the constellation, you can check stepping on the one of the elements to see if he or she really wants to do what you want to say what you what you say so if it really also sees you as being in charge but for now i would like you to step on them on yourself again it's always good to, to end the constellation on your own piece of paper because then you get back in your own energy again and just well take a short while to Take a picture, an inner picture. Okay, so this is how it is. And this is what maybe, yeah, you want to do something. Maybe you said, oh, I want to change something here for you, for myself, or maybe you got some advice from the empty center or from the wanting results. And then if you want, you can share that in the chat so we can have a little bit of feedback from what happened. And if you want feedback, if you're watching the replay, then just send me an email with what happened. And that's always what, what I always tell people when I do constellations. If, if something came up and you said, whoa, I mean, it's really stressful or I'm really confused, give it some time, like a day, two. And then if it's still confusing, send me a message and I'll get back to you and see what I can do for you. So if you want to share, you don't have to, but if you want to share something, just go ahead and send it in the, in the chat.
And this is also something that you can do in silence. If you are with three people, for example, you ask somebody to represent, well, your empty center and you ask somebody to represent uh, you wanting results. And then in silence, you ask people to move around, just to follow their inner movement. And then in five minutes, it's so completely clear what is happening. So that's very interesting. Dick says, I noticed that wanting result tasted a little dirty in the beginning. Yeah, that's interesting. Tasted a little dirty, yeah. So it's about using your taste. Yeah. Yeah, we have all kinds of judgment about these parts of us. So it's good to explore that and, and knowing that it's all part of you and it will always be a part of you. So thank you for sharing, Dick. Okay, if there are no questions or sharings anymore, then I would like to continue. Oh, there's one more. Yes, Dick liked the empty space. Ah, that's good. Yeah. I know Dick a little, so I know that he likes that. Anna, my empty center was quite far from the rest until I actually acknowledged it. Then the feeling changed to more closeness. Okay, yeah. So this is exactly what happens the force of place. If you don't acknowledge something, then you just put it away, but it will never go away because it's part of you. By saying, yes, I see you and acknowledge it, then it will come closer. You will have a strong relationship and you can use it. And that's the thing, it gives you, it empowers you actually to have more choice in what to do. It go use the empty center or go for results. I mean, and you can do both at the same time. There's nothing wrong with wanting results. But if the only thing you can do is wanting results and focusing on results, then oh, it's, not all, it's not always going to help. Okay, so what I would like to do is share a little bit about the five-day training I'm going to give next month in Bucharest and in November in uh, Budapest. And I'm thinking of doing a six-day training in Holland in the beginning, well, the, yeah, the, the, the spring of 2019. Well, the goal of this training is to use business constellations in your day-to-day -day business as a coach, trainer, and manager. So it's really practical on how, yeah, what kind of ways are there to use a constellation. You will learn how to do the interview, set up the constellations, do the interventions, and round it up. So you will really learn how to facilitate. You will also develop a radar for systemic forces. So you will learn, okay, so to sense what is happening with these with the order, what is happening with place, what is happening with exchange. And we'll practice practical forms of constellations. I have some fixed formats um, that you can use well, almost right away. You don't even have to do a lot of uh, experience. You don't have to need, need a lot of experience. Um, and we're going to practice a lot. And I'm also inviting a real client from a big company. So we're not only going to work with uh, the other Participants, because well, most of the time they are from small companies, have their own company. Sometimes we have a bigger company. Um, but it's interesting to, to have somebody new that you haven't worked with. We're gonna do, not going to do that the first day, but the fourth day. Um, and when you're going to work with, with that person. And I'm also flexible. If you say, I want to work with more like this or more do it more like that, I want to. Then I tune into the group. I ask you. What is it you want? What is it you need? And well, together we create actually this training. It will evolve as we as we go on. And yeah, that's because I use the intuitive approach and that's also what you will learn, a more intuitive approach to um, constellations. So if you really say, I want a lot of theoretical background, I really want to know the, the facts and I want to know the, uh, yeah, very factual and step-by-step process, then don't do this training. It's, I'm, I'm in a, I, I do it differently. And well, there are other people that do it more, and um, yeah, less intuitive. Well, questions I get is, can everyone learn it? And yes, some are more talented than others. Um, but if you sense like this is something for you, you can learn it, whatever. Anyway, I know it. Um, question is, do I use Hellinger's methodology? Yes, because everything was based on, on Hellinger's methodology. And yes, I also uh, work with the silence more. I'm not very strict with the 
sentences or with fixed procedures. And that's also more the helling our way. Do you need to be certified? Well, there's no certification. I can give you a certif certificate, but there's no certifying organization or um, everybody can do this. Even after this webinar or even yesterday, you can say, oh, I'm a facilitator, I do this. I would always advise you to uh, be really aware of where can, what can you do and what can you not do yet. Uh, but I'm not saying that you need to do a training. For me, a training it was very helpful because it also gives you a lot of um, practicing and more uh, confidence in doing this. Yeah, will I be able to facilitate all by myself? That's what people ask if after these five days, can I just do it myself? And yes, most people can. Uh, yeah, except for example, if you're, it, it turns out that you're really working on some personal issues and you don't take a lot of time to practice, then it's more difficult. But even then you will get some formats. There will be a, an online a learning environment with all kinds of exercises with audios, with videos, um, theory, and you can just use elements from that without practicing. You can do it right away. Do we only do business constellations? No, because what I said is we're going to use constellations in a business environment, but especially in the training, we also work with family constellations or other type of constellation because, um, well, part of the training is that you develop yourself as a facilitator. So I already expect you to have done some personal development, but we'll also do some personal development related to facilitating business constellations. So where and when? Well, Bucharest, Romania, October the 15th until the 19th is almost, almost there. Uh, more information on businessintuitiontraining.com or at my website, intuitioninbusiness.com. Um, and also in Budapest, November the 26th until the 30th. And it's interesting for the Dutch people because I know already also some Dutch people have been in France, also in Paris, giving this training. And people said, oh, why? Why don't I just go to Paris or Romania or Budapest or Bucharest? And I do these five days and the weekend before and the weekend after I have a holiday. So it's a very good combination of traveling and having fun and learning this new craft. So. Um, also for the Dutch people, I would really, well, not recommend, but invite you to explore the possibility of doing this. Um, but I also give the training in the Netherlands, and then we have six days, and because the traveling is not an issue, I split it up in two times two and one and one. Uh, and I'm currently creating a group for the beginning of 2019, next year. So if you're interested, just let me know. Um, let me see, because if you want to more know more about the training, let me see, then here is the link. So you can click on the link. In the replay, um, yeah, just go to intuition slash or dash dash in dash business.com. Um, and on my website, and I'll send it to you in an email, there is also this exercise about cho choosing intuitively, because I, th I find it very important that you're in you use your intuition in deciding either to go or not to go. And it's not, a, it's not always a straight yes or a straight no. This, this, this um, exercise will give you more intuitive information about the different choices you have. And I would say there's this choice of doing this training now, doing this training another time, doing this training at another other train with another trainer or doing this training not at all, don't do the training. And sometimes it's interesting to add a question mark for an option you haven't think, thought of. Um, and then if you really find, wow, I need to do this training now, but I see all kinds of issues with money, with time, with traveling, whatever, give me a call contact me and we have a Skype conversation and I we can see how we can make it work because I really believe in this intuitive flow. And if the intuitive flow leads you to this training, then we need to find a way to make it happen. So I want to invite you to explore that. Okay, it's been getting dark here. So you see a little bit light coming from the right. Um, well, that was it actually. That's what I wanted to share with you. Um, so if you're interested, let me know if you just say, okay, this was a wonderful webinar and 
I can do some things myself. Feel free. I mean, there's no obligation or anything. Um, because for me, if you want to join, then you're more than welcome. And I, I really like to do the work. And then it's interesting to see how this flow is flowing. And also here, I'm just the observer. I'm not trying to really uh, fix things, change things. I've quit doing that most of the time. Um, if you have any questions left, put them in the chat. Or if you watch the replay, send me an email. Um, I wish you a very good night, good evening, or whatever the rest of the day will bring you. And I might see you somewhere in Bucharest, Budapest, somewhere else in the world. South Africa is on my list to go to. And I'll, we'll stay in touch.